I'm backstage with Carol Alt, supermodel, actress, author, and I, there's so many other things, but I forgot. Fill me in. What have you been working on? <laughs> just about everything. One of each of those, actually. I just finished a film, a very dramatic piece with uh, Billy Zane, uh, uh, Armand Asante, Sean Young, uh, Eric Braden from The Young and Restless. It was a very, very heavy piece. George Kennedy was also in it. And then I finished, just shortly before that, a, a very comedic piece where I play an Amazon woman, which is, you know, the first in my career because I spent my entire life running away from anything that said Amazon woman on it. But it was just so funny. It has Ali Larder from Heroes and Talia Shire, uh, Bill, um, David Carradine. So it's oh, wow. got a really great cast, too. And uh, so that one's called The Caveman Comedy. The other one's called The Man Who Came Back. So I did one comedy, one drama. Two books, which the second book just came out uh, about a month ago, and it's about raw foods and how it basically not only saved my life but changed my life so that I can eat and still look like a supermodel, <laughs> but still, but eat as much of anything that I want. So I teach people how to do that, how to nutrition themselves, and how to stay away from something like this. What does that say? Supermodel meal in a box. Supermodel meal in a box. <laughs> do you get? Did you get that? <laughs> This is totally not my meal, because if you read my books, you can eat like a horse and still look like a supermodel and have more than a meal in a box. And then, because of those books, I started a supplement company with, wow. yeah, with food, snacks, and supplements all raw so that you don't even have to think about it. You pick up the phone or you order online and we ship it right to you and you've got raw snacks you can throw in your bag, you can take with you that are tasty and nutritious and you'll never be hungry and you'll always be thin and you will look fabulous forever. So I'm working on that. And then I just started on a series of books, uh, 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 fiction books. See, look how amazing she looks. <laughs> I still fit in samples. Show it off. <laughs> I, I just um, started a series of books about uh, a model, so it's four books based on the life of this model, I call her Mac, and her experience in the modeling industry, and that's based on basically my life and you know some of the stories and things that happened to me. But it, it does have a redeeming value, and that is that um, I really wanted to be able to teach young girls coming in how to keep their integrity in this business, how to eat right, and let them know that they can eat and still be you know, thin enough. I, I, I was just talking with Gideon, who's uh, Joanna Mastriani's uh, longtime beau, and he was saying he hired a girl almost out of pity because she was so thin. He thought we have to hire her so that she'd be able to eat. He, and, and he said she's just so thin, it's pitiful and painful to look at her. And I think that some of these girls need to hear that. Otherwise, they, they don't have any gauge of what's too thin and what's too fat. They just keep getting thinner and thinner and thinner. And uh, the designers follow their body styles, make the clothes smaller and smaller and smaller. Or maybe they're following the designers who are making the, the clothes smaller and smaller and smaller and they're getting thinner and thinner and thinner. Whether the chicken or the egg came first, right. it's a very unhealthy moment in modeling. And uh, so I, I'm hoping to have some socially redeeming value for these books. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and my, and my boyfriend just took off to Russia, Sorry. so I'm flying back and forth to see him. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, thank God I'm very busy. Very so busy. the movies, when do the movies come out? Well, I'm hoping, you know, National Lampoon bought, uh, uh, did uh, the caveman comedy. It was called Homo Erectus. We're not even going to go there. <laughs> and the other one is going to, uh, they're going to have trailers at Cannes. So that should be lots of fun and interesting because I've never been to Cannes. So. And how would someone get information on the supplements, on the books, all these different projects you're yeah. working on? Is there like an official fan website? Uh, not a fan website. There is an official website. It's run by my team and uh, it's carolalt.com, so you can't forget that. <laughs> and then it, you hit raw nutrition and we educate, we hook you up with people who have raw foods, and when my line of supplements start kicking in, you'll be able to get everything you need from us right there. So the raw foods, you eat all you want. It's something with the enzymes that are still alive. I mean, I'm sure it's a long story, but it if you is. Could... It is. There, it's basically enzymes, vitamins and minerals, pH factor, and molecular structure. And all of that changes when you cook food to the worse. And basically, if you process food correctly, which is dehydrating instead of baking or frying or you know cooking in heavy-duty heat. Uh, you can have anything. You can have cakes, cookies, candies, ice creams. There's a fabulous restaurant here in New York City that yeah, it makes tiramisu, makes apple turnovers and tarts. And, and you eat all you want and you I don't get fat? All you want. And in fact, I'll have that for lunch before I'll have a ham sandwich. 
Absolutely. That's but, fascinating. But I'm not vegan either, so I eat things like um, tartars and carpaccios, uh, raw fishes. Uh, you'll always find me in the best Japanese restaurant in any town I'm in, and because it really has to, you have to be careful about where you eat, of course, always, even if you're eating cooked food. And so it's it's a been very interesting trip. Now, what advice would you give to all the people out there trying to get involved in the modeling industry? Well, you know, I always tell young girls that really everybody always thinks if they lay down or they leave their integrity at the door that they'll work better or they'll steal jobs from other girls. And really it's not like that. I think the, the girls who have level heads on their shoulders and strong business sense are the girls who can have long-term careers. Unfortunately, all of a sudden these girls are coming in and they're trying to make a quick buck. They really don't want to do this and uh, you know I, I find lately there's no sense of history in the modeling industry if you ask any one of these girls who Cheryl Teagues is or who Christy Brinkley is or They're who Carol Alt is only because they might have seen me at a show and somebody said oh it's Carol Alt though who's that you know they have no sense of history whatsoever and this is an amazing industry we have done so much from our fill and thumb now I look at this is a dumb blonde moment no. right <laughs> Philanthropic <laughs> uh, ventures that a lot of, you know, because I, I know that we did way back when even Supermodels in the Rainforest, Darfur, whatever it is, we are socially conscious in this business, business yet we're very, very creative people. I mean, I think people who have joined this business are usually very, very creative people. I, I think that this is just an amazing industry and I don't want to lose the history of the people that came before. and built and laid the foundations of the industry and uh, for the girls that are here today and for the photographers and right. you know everybody I mean there were people who laid the foundation for me Lauren Hutton who had the first contract all of a sudden I came up and there were contracts and now there's contracts for everything and you know they just need to know where the history lies in the early 90s and I don't know if this was a rumor or not um, a group of supermodels and I'm sure you were involved in that as well all of you guys Try to get together and do and, and uh, create a model union, kind of like SAG for yes. acting. Is that true? Yes, it was true. Um, and what in fact, it, well, we had a meeting on it, and it was really not a meeting of minds. What what they wanted to do for the models, you know, one of the things that works for SAG is it's exclusive to people who are working. Not just everybody who says they're an actor can be in it. You have to have worked. You have to be able to pay the dues every year. And, and therefore, we're able to have not only an exclusive enough union that is able to protect its members, but we're able to have things like health care. And if you have too many people who aren't working in a union just for the sake of being in a union because they say they're an actor, it'll drain the whole system. And I think, you know, I'm, I was one of the people, I mean, I was for it in, in the general idea. But when it came down to the specifics, there's no way to protect a model in Europe if you're a union in New York. Right. There's no way to protect every girl who says she's a model but is really waitressing, even if they're paying the dues. How do you tell who's really actually a model and who's you know, a lingerie model or a Playboy model or a this model? I mean, does every model get included? It was just, there was just so many things Factor. that was against being able to put together a union that was going to serve the people the way that we wanted it to, and that was to protect the girls coming up, to keep them from getting too thin, things like that. So, you know, it just never really gelled. I think in Milan, it's illegal to hire a model to do a runway show if they're under a certain weight. And I, I don't remember correctly, I think also in Paris. I know for sure in Milan, I think Spain. I thought it was everywhere. I thought the CFDA did that, actually. In Europe? I here. thought they did it everywhere. But, you know, once you lay a law, you have to enforce it, or the law is not a law, it's just an opinion. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Nice to all see right, you nice again. Nice to see you, too. Please, thank you, guys. you guys have to go look at her website, caralt.com. Yes. You can get all the information on all the different projects that she's worked on and that she's currently working on, and any future projects that she will work on. I'm sure there's going to be many, yeah, many, 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 many things going on in the future as well. Yeah. No, I have four slashes after my name. Model, actress, entrepreneur, and author. So, you know, give, give me credit, okay? I'm not just a model. Those days are... Over. All right, let me know when you're ready. Over? No, no, not all... Douche. Okay, punch me. No, not you know, with the sound effects and all. Douche. See, now she's going to hate me. No. All right.
I meant the days over of just modeling. He's See, digging his, his grave of, deeper here. Okay, I'm sorry. This is a really good interview. Are we rolling? We've right. been rolling, baby. You guys, he's got all this on tape. <laughs> Hi, this is Carol Ald, and I'm coming to you live from New York City Fashion Week for FNL, Fashion News Live, and I'm with Rocco G, baby. 